Okay, so I have a portrait that um, is developing and with the stage of that we're at in this one, I do have some buildup of skin tone. So light to dark, you know, all of that is somewhat established, at least in this part of the face, not so much the, the neck and the hairline, but let's look at the, the face right here because at issue for today is how to paint facial hair. We don't want to paint it every individual piece of facial hair. So what we want to think about is, of course, having some color underneath in terms of the skin tone already to layer on top of. Make sure that you're not painting the facial hair first and then painting the color of the skin on top of that, right? So have that finished first. And then you want to put, put that texture in after. So with what's happening here, we want to get, if this is my reference, we want to get a little more of the lighter effect over here on the left. And it's really gets very dark over here on the right and almost solid, right? In terms of like a dark, dark brown. But over here on the left, we want to leave a little more of those open spaces. And so I'm mixing, mixing a little bit of my blue, my ultramarine blue with my umber. Oops, where did my water go? And then I'm also going to pick up just a little bit of yellow ochre to, to warm it a little bit and some burnt sienna. So what I end up with is kind of a, a warm neutral but has has some of that kind of blue and dark brown in it, right? I want to make it weak enough and I don't want to have tons of it on my brush, so I'm blotting my brush a little bit as well so that when I start to lay in some, some brush work, I want it to kind of you know, have, have some color to it, but not not be super, super, super dark, super, super strong. Kind of skipping around a little bit also, leaving some open places. And I know it's probably kind of hard to see what, what I'm doing here with the brush, but kind of letting the tip of my brush kind of dance around the surface and moving it in different directions. But I also want to pull, pull some out with a dry brush in place. I feel like I'm, I'm getting too heavy handed, right? You can always kind of go back in and Lighten that, pull it up just a little bit. And let's keep going over here to the right. And right about here is where it would start to get really, really dark. But for now, let's stay on the light side of the face. We'll go around here, the corner of the mouth. Um, and I'm allowing a little bit of the color to change slightly. I think that's not necessarily a bad thing and can, you know, can help it feel a little, look a little bit more three-dimensional. Putting a little more browns and siennas and, and umbers in the darker spots. And then as I move around here to the bottom, I'm just blotting my brush because I want to use a just a weaker version of it because here is where it really starts to get much lighter. And then kind of thins out somewhat. Before it gets too dry, 
I'm going to want to go back and assess a little bit. Okay, what, what do I need to pull out? I'm taking a dry brush, and I'm just kind of lifting in a couple of spots. I don't want it to be quite so solid, maybe in a couple of places. All right, let's, let's keep going here, because I want to make this a little bit darker as I move down to this bottom area. And kind of contours the face a little bit, so wraps around the cheek, or the the chin, the bottom of the chin. And there's kind of um more of an open spot right about here, so you can kind of work around that so hair gets a little bit thinner. And, and then where the beard starts to fall into shadow, right about here, um, I'm going to start to pick up a little more paint. Same colors, um, but I might put just a tad more blue to allow that to be a little bit darker. It's really dark here underneath the lip and this part of the chin. And because I'm continuing and working wet into wet with what I just put down there, it's going to kind of blend for me. And here, over here on the right, I'm not going to use quite as much of those open spaces. Still maybe leaving a few, but I'm also approaching it a little more in a solid, solid shape. It does open up a little bit again over here. And I'm trying to make note of the direction of the hair on the face as well. It changes almost kind of sideways uh, right here. And let's see how my camera's doing yet. And then at the top, not at the top, the mustache. Um, I'm going to do that same thing. So I left off right about here. So let's pick up with my slightly darker color that has more umber and more blue in it for the mustache. And again, the mustache is a, looks like, you know, more of a solid, more of a solid area. I'm still letting the tip of my brush kind of skip around a little bit, moving it in different directions, but also trying to notice the, the direction that the hair is growing on the face. Okay, so some of this I can go back and darken if I if I feel like I need to, but while it's still wet, I'm going to blot my brush. I'm rinsing it out and blotting my brush. And I'm going to take um, kind of a dry brush and go along some of my, my line work here just to kind of soften them. I don't want too much crazy, you know, I don't want the texture to be super, super pronounced everywhere. So just kind of quieting it down a little bit. Same thing here in the lighter places. Just using a little tiny bit of water in my brush to soften the texture. I don't want to fill in, you know, and obscure everything. So there's there's a balance to be had with this.
Um, and then I feel like I need a, just a little more transition up here in the, the mustache um, here at the top. So I'm kind of going over what I just what I just did. But now I'm dropping in a little more of the dark umbers that I used over here on the right, I'm using some of those in a couple of places on the left. And because this is still a little bit wet, it's, you know, bleeding in, right? There's some blending that's happening just because of the wet into wet phenomenon. All right, and there's probably a, a point at which it starts to get to be too much. Maybe that's now. One, one of the things about letting something dry like facial hair in your in your portrait is that just like anything else in your portrait if you feel like if it's overkill or it's distracting it's becoming too dominant in terms of the you know the features of your portrait there are things you can do to soften them you can darken other places around the, the face and the figure but you know take take a look at what the overall effect is if it's if you feel like it's too you know it's just too, too much happening there take that again a dry brush blot, blot your brush a little bit just a tiny amount of water and you can go back over and lift you know do a little bit of lifting so that some of this really pronounced texture kind of almost becomes part of the skin underneath it, right? But you don't want to overwork the paper and you don't want to take out everything you've done, right? So don't erase too much. Don't block too much. Also, the other thing with facial hair is that Sometimes when it looks too busy or the texture looks too pronounced, it might mean that you just need some more solid areas. So I'm going to take a little bit of that umber and a little bit of my blue again. And I'm going to drop in just a tad more solid area here and then a little more, kind of a solid area down at the bottom of the chin. Where the hair starts to overlap and concentrate, this can be, you know, a good, good thing to do. It kind of brings things together a little bit. So don't fret that you feel like it still needs to be darker, but it seems too busy and pronounced. If you make things more solid in a few areas, actually that can solve your problem sometimes. Okay, so maybe this, this helps in terms of building up layers of facial hair. So you wanna start with a little more water build towards those darker sections, but also don't be afraid to let colors change, right? Depending on what's happening with the, you know, you might make some observations about your subject, right? Things get a little more yellow or a little more orange or, you know, and, and also don't, don't be afraid to use those darks. If you're looking at heavy beards or thick mustaches or whatever, that's part of that, you know, of that person's likeness, so, so go for it. Um, noticing some pockets of light in here that seem to be needing some darks. So maybe I would still, still go in with some, you know, some heavier blacks in a couple of spots, but once I get his black hair, 
once I get the dark shadow under the chin, every everything here that I've done is, is going to look kind of in place, right? It's not going to be quite so, you know, quite so pronounced. But hopefully that helps your work and your process with facial hair.